Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Here's a quick heads up if you haven't heard yet. Another 737 has been lost. This one departed out of Jakarta, flew for about four minutes and crashed into the waters north of Jakarta. In fact, it went down in the same area as the doomed Lion Air 737 MAX a couple of years ago. This time, it's not a 737 MAX, but an older 737 500 operated by Srirachaya Air. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I probably did not. The flight took off out of Jakarta en route to the island of Borneo, and something bad happened during the initial climb out of the airport. For information, I would suggest following the thread on the avherald.com, Aviation Herald. It's an excellent source of information, and they're following this accident. Another good source of information is on YouTube, the Blanco Lirio channel. It's run by a fellow named Juan Brown. He's a 777 pilot, and he gives excellent analysis of aviation safety-related events. Flight Radar 24 has ADSB data. In fact, the ADSB data is a very high quality. They were able to follow the aircraft from its departure from the gate and while taxiing on the airport. Take off, initial climb, all the way out to where the event happened and the aircraft went down. On this page, there's a graphic which can be pulled up which plots the speed and altitude versus time and it is interesting it doesn't give all of the answers but it gives a clue in this plot the speed is yellow altitude is blue these are altitudes here and on the right side is the key for speeds ADSB gives ground speeds and barometric altitude so you must think about the field elevation, terrain elevation under the aircraft, and winds aloft. At any rate, the aircraft left the gate at about uh, 1416 or so local time. This is 0715, 0720, all the way through 0740 UTC. So the aircraft left the gate, taxied to the departure runway, stopped, moved, stopped, moved in the departure sequence. They finally got to the runway at about uh, 0 to 736 UTC, 1436 local, started their departure run. You can see the speed increasing while they were on the surface. Eventually, they got to their takeoff speed and... Um, began to climb. And there's the initial climb, bracketing the speed, climbing, accelerating, climbing through about 10,900 feet according to the data. Around there, something bad happened and the speed sharply decreased and the aircraft sharply lost altitude. In fact, it continued losing altitude all the way down until impact. The last ADSB data block indicated about 250 feet. The uh, ground speed had dropped sharply, and during this probably out of control descent toward the surface, at some point the speed began to increase, and in fact increased up to about uh, 370 knots or so. So it appears to have been a wild ride and we don't know what happened. I would hate to think that something caused the aircraft to lose speed and stall and spin and then recover too late. The 737 has been known to have structural problems. There was an Aloha flight which lost part of the uh, upper fuselage 
which caused the aircraft to be very hard to control, and they made it back to the airport. Other 737s have had other problems. This older airplane does not have the MCAS system, which caused control problems on the faded Lion Air flight. So pay attention to the reports sure to come from Blanco Lirio and also the Av Herald. Be wary of a lot of the speculation that is going to show up in social media. There are a lot of knuckleheads, a lot of conspiracy theorists out there. The truth is that aviation is a mature, well-developed, high-tech industry, but there are still bad things that can happen that have not been foreseen. So things can happen that the crew hasn't been trained for, that the engineers hadn't quite thought of. Occasionally there are things that people have thought of and dismissed as a low risk, which end up killing people. Watch the news. I'll be watching it too. Thank you for your attention.